It's Tony D and Little Joan, and this is a screenwriter's rant on Star Wars, The Alkalite. And if you think this is just going to be another screed about how Star Wars has fallen, yeah, you're probably right. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. The links are in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys, books 1 through 13, available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. So, what's The Alkalite? Well, this is uh, kind of a notorious show if you've been following the uh, intrigue behind the scenes at Lucasfilms and Disney. and So, I'm just going to give you sort of a layman's lay of the land for, as I understand it. I don't know every little detail, but the story goes something like this. Kathleen Kennedy the dark Sith of Lucasfilms, uh, apparently, you know, launch, greenlit a bunch of feminist force BS <laughs> in Star Wars, uh, you know, because after, I guess, getting George Lucas's coffee back in the day, she decided she would destroy the very thing that made her rich and kind of famous, I guess. So uh, this was one of those many projects. Now... The Alkalite in particular is run by, I think her uh, last name is Hedlund, and she was one of the protégés of Harvey Weinstein, apparently. Apparently. I, a protégé might be the wrong word, but I think she worked for him or whatever. Um, and this is supposed to be super ultra-woke feminist Star Wars. And in fact, the project's been dead a bunch of times. There's a some lawsuit, I think there's at least one lawsuit connected to it, where they had initially hired like another female producer, but I don't know, something went wrong, and then she had to bow out of the project or was forced out, and so now she's suing because she was promised money, and then there was this story, this is months back, and I'm, again, I'm just doing this off the top of my head. Um, the story went something like they introduced the Alkalite in one of the many Star Wars, I don't know, events. And, like, no one had seen Frame 1. No one knew about it. And it, it 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 was, like, at a time when Kathleen Kennedy looked like she was on her way out. And they just thought, oh, yeah, this, this, is, this thing isn't happening. And that she was trying to make it happen by pushing it forward enough that there'd sort of be enough interest and enough money in it that Disney would go, well, I guess we better not cancel it now. So somehow this has survived. Um, but the buzz on it couldn't be more uh, poisonous, in my view. The nerds absolutely are not going to watch this thing. I think the only people who are going to watch it... I mean, first off, it's on Disney+. Plus, and I've had many a video mentioning Disney+, Plus and what I think of it. And I think it's totally pointless. Like, on the one hand, you could have made Disney+, Plus a sort of thing that was almost an adjunct to something like ABC, right? So you could have had, like, the situation where maybe you premiere the stuff on Disney+, Plus and then you show it on ABC to get some interest maybe a few months later. And then you say, well, the only other place you could see it, if you want to see the rest of the episodes, would be on Disney+. Plus. And then you get some sort of cross pollination there and hopefully people go buy Disney Plus because they want the convenience of seeing these shows whenever they want. However, it doesn't seem to be happening. I think they want, expect you to keep subscribing to Disney Plus because they're always constantly putting this stuff out. Now, who's going to watch a show called The Alkalite about Star Wars? Well, it's probably not really aimed at adults. It looks like it's kind of aimed for kids. And at the same time, it appears to be a bunch of girl boss nonsense. All, all the main characters seem to be women. Women, 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 women. And then there's some sort of mystery. Oh, they're killing Jedis. And oh, the killers are women. The, the important people are women. And, you know, men, ah, they just keep getting in the way. Why do we keep having men? Um, <laughs> so you see women. Here's She's leading. And then she's got two men assistants who I'm sure get emasculated in every other scene. I guess that, she looks like Trinity. Is that Trinity? Is that her? I don't think so. Looks like her, doesn't it? Uh, so, 
And then uh, the other word was they're going to introduce some sort of crazy witches, uh, I think. I don't know if they're going to introduce them in this one or another show, but they're going to introduce these, like, witches, and somehow they're going to open up the force to other things. Like, they're basically unraveling what what little backstory the Lucas George Lucas actually created. Now, I'm, as you know, very much against midichlorians i think that ruined i think that destroyed star wars be, long before we got here long before but if you were going to do a star wars show you probably want to address the midichlorian issue and say well the people who have midichlorians they can be jedi and sith and the people who don't have it well they're just normies that roam around who knew oh everybody's going to be a jedi and i have a feeling all the women will be good at it and in fact, um, the rumor, one of the rumors I heard, and Doomcock has another video today. It's, it was like, he couldn't be more angry. Oh, there it is, right on the side of the screen. Lucas destroyed Star Wars today. All hope to save Star Wars, uh, I guess, is lost. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he pretty much did. He sighed with Bob Iger. Which, you know, if you have no hope of coming back, and you just really... You know, want to want to continue to get some money. Maybe you want to maybe you want to roll back in and do a Star Wars series to get another giant pile of money. Sure, that's that would be a smart move. Smart move, saying to Iger, ah, yeah. But uh, you know, as I said, I would contend Lucas already destroyed his creation long before we got to this point. But that being said, they're destroying it even further, in my view. So they got this whole witch angle and. The rumor was they were going to try to somehow undo the three sequel movies and then uh, maybe fix it, give it to Fred Bro, and he'd fix it. Instead, it looks like they're going to make it even more woke. <laughs> it looks even more woke as F. And they even go so far as to do this sort of logo thing uh, with a ring, which I found very interesting because... What does that remind you of? Uh, to me, it reminds me of The Rings of Power a little bit. Uh, another show that's woker than woke. Uh, June 4th, if you want to punish yourself and you really hate yourself and your life. I mean, and you still have Disney+. Plus. What the hell is wrong with you if you still have Disney+. Plus? Anyhow, the key line in this is uh, when one of the characters says something like, it isn't about good or evil. It about, it's about who controls the power. And that pretty much right there tells you Marxism. <laughs> I mean, that's something, um, you know, the Marxist, the communist, they'd all be about that. Oh, it's not about good or evil. No, it's about who controls the power. Oh, okay. So as long as they control the power, I tell, I can tell you what's good and evil? Is that is that what you're saying? It sounds like that's exactly what they're saying. So the messaging on this show is, whoo, in my view, like, I think this is not only a bad show, I think it would be damaging it to show it to your children, <laughs> um, you know, and you could, you know, say, well, it's just a wacky Star Wars show, ah, it's for kids, who cares? Yeah, I don't think Disney Plus is for kids, um. I, I don't really, can't tell you really who it's for. Um, I would say that probably most of their audience aren't kids. They're older adults who fantasize that they're kind of kids and still love Disney for some reason. Um, but uh, I couldn't be more out of this. I mean, I am so not, I mean, you don't have to work this hard for me not to watch Star Wars anymore. Disney, I'm out. I'm out forever. You, you could get as based as F tomorrow, right? You could hire Hulk Hogan to be the Jedi Master, and uh, uh, you could resurrect John Houston from the dead and have him direct the damn thing. I'd still be like, no, go screw yourself. Go pound sand. I don't care if Disney finally collapses and gets taken over by the most American... I don't care if Trump takes it over. I'm not watching Star Wars anymore. Go F yourselves. Retire it. I'm determined to see, I'm going to live long enough to see the Star Wars franchise retired. And that's what it should be. It should be retired. 
for like uh, a generation or two. You should probably put this in the vault for 40 years and allow people to forget it's this stuff. And then maybe in 40 years, you could start fresh, reboot, hard reboot with the original movies. And maybe if you have some real talent there, you can make it work again. This looks awful. <laughs> it looks like girl boss nonsense. Um, and I, I'll, I'll make this prediction. They'll put, they've got a two episode premiere on June 4th. Any money they spend on this show, it's all going to be spent on the June, uh, June 4th premiere two episodes. Like if they put a little bit of effort into this, it'll be on those shows. You know, they'll put cool effects and they'll throw in a couple of things that maybe it'll be sort of cool to try to draw you in because they they already know things i think are falling apart with a franchise like this and a few others especially at disney so they have to pull back a little so i i predict this is this is going to be a pullback and then uh once you get to episode three oh they'll start stepping on the gas again so all the girl boss stuff might be a little bit pulled back and you'll probably get some reasonable take from youtubers who maybe aren't total shills saying oh this this wasn't so bad that's that's about the best i ever see for star wars these days if it's a show or a movie that wasn't as bad as you think <laughs> but for me this is just the entire franchise is just utterly poisoned i don't know why they keep doing it the vision is even if you take aside the woke stuff, maybe you don't even believe. Ah, woke. Yeah, I had a guy yelling at me at the comments about being, I don't see any woke stuff in this. Um, so let's say you, you don't care about the woke stuff. Okay. The midichlorians changed everything. Uh, the sequels changed everything. This show and a few of the other shows are changing everything. It's not what it was. The original story was, I'll say this, again and again, that Star Wars had droids, lightsabers, spaceships, faster than light travel, uh, pew pew, everything. But there was still the concept of the Force. The Force was this mystical thing that trumped all that. And very few people practiced their religion in the Force, Jedi or Sith, and yet, it was still something. Even if everybody in the, quote, modern day of that world, just it was mostly forgotten. And that mysticism part of it was at the heart of the movie. Because despite all this technology, you still had the Force that could trump anything. And really, the Force was God. I hate to tell you, it was God. It was a metaphor for God. That's gone. It was undercut by midichlorians, which is still maybe could have said, well, it's God putting the midichlorians in you or something like that. Now it's just, they're basically just unraveling the rules in order to push, in my view, commie Marxist bull <laughs> about power. No, it's about power. Good and evil doesn't matter. It's about power. I'm a woman. Um... <laughs> So you're, I think you're just going to get a bunch of girl boss nonsense in this. Uh, three act breakdown, not even going to matter. I mean, uh, it's a TV show anyway. So, but my prediction would be they'll they'll try to they'll try to be subtle and cool in the first two episodes. Quite frankly, looking at the talent coming out of Disney, I don't even think they'll pull that off. I mean, look at Obi Wan. You know, some people tried to. Say, well, you know, the first couple episodes weren't that bad. Uh, maybe this will go. You know, same thing with Boba Fett. Well, oh, come on, guys, give it a chance, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why why you keep giving this a chance. George Lucas literally came out today. And this will be the big story on Doomcock's video, and you should probably watch it. Literally came out today supporting Bob Iger. You know, the captain of woke at Disney, essentially. The guy who put all these people in place who are doing this stuff to your favorite comics, movies, games, all that stuff. If you want to blame the disintegration of 
Disney on anybody, I think Bob Iger would be number one on the hit parade. And if you're going to say, ah, it's not his fault, it's bigots. Well, I don't even know why you watch my videos. Like, seriously, go get a life. Um, yeah, so, I, what's wrong with you if you're watching this show? <laughs> I, I just don't get it. I don't even know why the nerds watch this show anymore. Like, there'll be a bunch of nerd reviewers that'll say, oh, I watched The Alkalite, so you don't have to. Uh, I'm not watching The Alkalite. I can watch this trailer and tell you it's probably trash. And if it's not... Well, nah, I'll miss it. I, you know, I think the odds are in my favor that uh, this would be a complete waste of time. Uh, there's a whole laundry list of other things I'd rather watch. You know, and you should think about that too. You know, it is, I think, something in the long term. If you're watching bad entertainment, it it, it kind of makes you stupid. It really does. It kind of rots your brain. I never really believed that back in the day when I watched TV all the time. My parents would always say, ah, TV will rot your brain. Well, go outside, play, play in the fresh air. And I would be like, ah. But it kind of made you lazy to sit around and watch TV. You'd be watching it like this, going, eh, this is all right. <laughs> so I think this is that. And it's not even. It's not even as good as the crap TV I used to watch. At least the crap TV I used to watch, they had a beginning, middle, of end of TV shows. They had a reason to try to make the show exciting. I mean, they fell into bad patterns, and a lot of it was just crap anyway. But this, this doesn't even rise to the level of 70s, 80s crap, in my view. It's, uh, it's like a polished turd, <laughs> I think. So uh, there you go. That's my uh, take on the Alkalite trailer and Star Wars once again. So let's read the uh, right up here. Star Wars series takes viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. Yeah, you know, the eras are so well kept. At, uh, you know, the studios are really big on continuity. You can tell from their movies. You can tell from the MCU, right? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're very concerned. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, you know, it's it's done. It's done. So, my advice to you is watch literally anything else. And that's it. That's it for me, Tony D, and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for our more base takes. If you can find a more base take than that, I say, take it. I will be at the Nerd Force Fest Nerd Force Fan Fest in Glassboro, New Jersey, Saturday from 10 to 4. Thanks to all who came out today at Parker's Bend um, for my talk on how to hunt the Jersey Devil. Had, man, that's a nice place. Oh, Parker's Bend. Holy cow. They had their own theater, and I was there giving the presentation. It was a really nice place. They had food and snack. It's It looks like the inside of a cruise ship. It's so nice. So thanks, guys, for having me out. Uh, I'll be back with more videos. We'll see you in the next one.